Dear students, under the topic Lagrange's partial differential equation, here we have problem 13. The question is x multiplied with y squared minus z squared into p plus y multiplied with z squared minus z x square into q is equal to z multiplied with x squared minus y square. First of all, we understand that this is in the form of Lagrange's equation. So we have to write the standard form of the Lagrange's equation now. So this is the standard form of the Lagrange's equation and comparing this with the given equation, we see that the value of p is equal to x multiplied with y squared minus z squared. The value of q is equal to y multiplied with z squared minus x square and the value of r is equal to z multiplied with x squared minus y square. So let us take and write this. So we have taken and written the values of p, q and r. Now we shall write the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary equation is given by dx by capital P is equal to dy by capital Q is equal to dz by capital R. Now we shall substitute the values of P, Q and R at these places. So we have substituted the value of P, Q and R This is and this is what we get. Now let us mark the first ratio as 1, the second ratio as 2 and the third ratio as 3. Now if you see, if you compare the ratios, we won't be able to use the method of grouping because for example if you compare 1 and 2, you have dx and dy in the numerator and in the denominator you have 3 variables x, y and z. So when you have in the such 3 variables, you won't be able to integrate it by separating the variables. So therefore we have to use the method of multipliers. Similarly, we, uh, we can also see 2 and 3 and 1 and 3 also have the same case. So, we cannot use the method of grouping completely. So, therefore, we have to use the method of multipliers. So, from the method of multipliers, we can form a fourth ratio which will be equal to we have to multiply the multipliers that is we, we represent the multipliers as L, M and N. So, first ratio has to be multiplied with L. So, we will get in the numerator L dx plus then add with the second ratio by multiplying it with yum so yum dy plus n d is at the same thing we have to do with the denominators also separately so this has to be multiplied with l so l x multiplied with y square minus z square plus m y that is the second one m y multiplied with z square minus x square and the third one has to be multiplied with n so plus yun z multiplied with x square minus y square. So this is what we have as the fourth ratio. Now in order to find the solution u and v, we have to choose the multipliers l, m and n in such a manner that the denominator of this fourth ratio should become 0. So let us see how to do that and we need two set of multipliers as we have the we have to find the solution u and the solution v. So first set of multipliers let us find now. So to find the first set of multipliers I am considering the denominator of the ratio 4. So that I have taken and written here. Now I have to choose the value for l, m and n in such a manner that I have to make this value 0. So what can I choose L, M and N as? So I am going to choose L to be equal to. So we are going to put L to be equal to X, M to be equal to Y and N to be equal to Z. And I am going to check whether it is becoming 0 or not. So this will be that is the denominator of the ratio 4 will be what? Substitute X in the place of L. So, x multiplied with x will become x square multiplied with y square minus z square plus. Now, we add the place of m substitute y. So, if you put y, y multiplied with y is y square multiplied with z squared minus x square plus at the place of n we have to put z. So, it becomes z multiplied with z is z square multiplied with x square minus y square. Now, let us multiply these to each of the terms within the bracket. So x square multiplied with y square will be x square y square minus x square z square plus similarly this you will be having. So y square z square minus y square x square plus this also that is z square x square 
and then minus z square y square. Now we have to check whether we are getting 0. So here you have x square y square. You have y square x square here. Both are same only and this is plus and this is minus. So we can cancel this. In a similar manner minus x square z square you have here. And here you have plus x square z square which, which can be cancelled. And similarly plus y square z square and minus z square y square are same. So this and this can be cancelled and therefore you are getting this to be equal to 0 and let us mark it as 1. So therefore if we choose the multipliers as x, y and z we are getting the denominator as 0. So therefore the first set of multipliers we have found which is L, M, N that is X, Y, Z is the first set of multipliers. In a similar way, let us find the second set of multipliers now. We shall now find the second set of multipliers for which I have taken and written the denominator. Now we have to choose another set of values for L, M and N in order that the denominator becomes 0. And it should not be X, Y, Z which we have chosen previously. So what are, what are the values uh, that we can choose in order to make this as 0? So that is what we have to think now. Now if you see we can make vanish of this x, y and z. Then if whatever is inside the bracket if you add it will give up to 0. So in order to make this x vanish we have to divide it by x. So we can choose the value of L to be 1 by x, M to be 1 by y and N to be 1 by z. So let us put... L to be equal to 1 by x, M to be equal to 1 by y and N to be equal to 1 by z. So what will happen to the denominator? It will become, so if you put 1 by x, it will be 1 by x, x multiplied with y square minus z square plus M is 1 by y multiplied with y into z square minus x square plus N is what? 1 by z. So if you substitute that, 1 by z, then z multiplied with x square minus y square. So this is what we get. Now this x and x gets cancelled, y and y gets cancelled and z and z gets cancelled. And so this will be what? It will be equal to y square minus z square and then plus z square minus x square plus x square minus y square. Now if you see plus y square minus y square gets cancelled minus z square plus z square and minus x square plus x square gets cancelled and we obtain this to be 0. So let me mark this as 2. So therefore we, find, we, we see that if we choose the multipliers 1 by x, 1 by y and 1 by z we see that the denominator of the fourth ratio becomes 0. Therefore the second set of multipliers are 1 by x, 1 by y and 1 by z. So therefore we have decided the multipliers. The first set of multipliers is x, y, z and the second set of multipliers is 1 by x, 1 by y and 1 by z. We shall now find the solutions u and v. So now in order to find the solutions u and v, I have taken and written the fourth ratio. Now in this ratio, if we make the denominators as denominator as 0, then we can equate the numerator as 0. This is by the method of multipliers. So for that, we have to choose the multipliers. We have already found the multipliers. The first set of multipliers is x, y, z. So first, we will choose the, those multipliers. So first set of multipliers we are choosing now, L, M, N is chosen as x, y, z. So in this fourth ratio, wherever we have L, M, N, we have to replace it by x, y, z. So what will happen to this ratio in the numerator? It will be x, dx because L is y, uh, x plus M is y. So y, dy plus N is z. So z, uh, z d, z. So th this is the numerator. And what about the denominator? We already saw that when we take L, M, N as X, Y, Z as multipliers, then this value was 0. So this is 0. If you refer 1, which I have already marked as 1, so you can refer that. So from 1, the denominator has become 0. So now if the denominator is 0, then by the rule from the method of multipliers, the numerator can be equated to 0. So Y, D, Y plus Z, D, Z, which is the numerator, this will be equal to 0. 
So if this is 0, integrating on both the sides, so when you integrate each term on both the sides, integral x dx will become x squared by 2 plus y squared by 2 plus the integration of z is z squared by 2 is equal to a constant c1. Now from this, we can take this as x square plus y square plus z square the whole divided by 2 is equal to c1. So taking this 2 to the right, we get x square plus y square plus z square to be equal to 2c1. But 2c1 is again a constant which can in general be written as c1 itself. So this is the first solution. Therefore, the first solution u is equal to x square plus y square plus z square. Similar manner, we have to find the solution v. So let us see how to find that. Now in order to find the second solution v, we have to choose the other set of multipliers that we have obtained. What is the other set? That is 1 by x, 1 by y and 1 by z. And we have to substitute these values instead of l, m and n in the ratio 4. So in this fourth ratio, we have to replace l, m, n by 1 by x, 1 by y and 1 by z. So when we do so, what we get is, so the ratio 4 will become, so 1 by x dx plus 1 by y dy plus 1 by z dz. So in the numerator, we will have this and the denominator is already 0, which we have found from 2. If you refer this, you will understand. So the denominator has become 0. So then by the method of multipliers, the numerator can be equated to 0. So dy plus 1 by z dz is equal to 0. So when we do so and when we integrate on both the sides, we see that what is the integration of 1 by x dx? It is log x plus 1 by y dy is log y plus 1 by z dz is log z is equal to log c2, the second constant. Now uh, from the logarithmic rule, we know that log a plus log b plus log c can be written as logarithm of a b c so by using this rule we can write this as so this will become okay so log x plus log y plus log z can be written as this is like a b and c can can be written as logarithm of x y z is equal to log c2 now comparing on both the sides, we can write x, y, z is equal to c2. So therefore the second solution v is equal to x, y, z. So this is v. Already we have found u and now we have found v. And therefore the general solution phi of u comma v equal to 0 is given by phi of what is u that we have found? It is here. That is x square plus y square plus z square. So that we have to write. So x square plus y square plus z square comma what is v x y z is equal to 0 is the second solution. This can be either 0 or you can write a general constant c also. Uh, it differs from textbook to textbook. So as per our textbook phi of u comma v is equal to 0 is the solution. Therefore I have written it in this form. So hope you have understood this problem. So the next problem which will be problem 14 is a very important question in the examination point of view which has appeared in various question papers. So kindly follow the next lecture. Thank you.